So I've come to the Etihad Stadium tonight because there's a meeting of the WIFs, Women in Football. This is an organisation that's been going about five years. They've never courted publicity, they've never had any publicity. I've no idea what is up for debate, what's on the agenda or really why they exist. So I think for that very reason and the fact they operate under the radar, it's worth us taking a look. Somebody better get down there and explain yeah. offside to her. Yeah, I know. Can you believe that? It's funeral arrangement. I think that's why I've seen some of those videos. Of course they don't. The game's gone mad. I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised. So I don't think any woman in football was shocked by that. It didn't sound like it was the end of the world. A charming Karen Brady this morning complaining about sexism. Yeah, do me a favour, love. And actually, it was a real derogatory tone that really annoyed me. And I think anybody who judges anybody's talent purely on gender, that's fundamentally wrong. It was the sexism scandal that made headlines around the world. The two Sky Sport presenters caught making sexist remarks about a female match official have apologised. And led to the exit of two of football's highest profile presenters. Andy Gray said he was devastated at losing a job he loved. I wasn't as shocked as the general public seemed to be. People have a view that maybe the public are behind the curve. They're not. If I'm honest, I think I've probably experienced worse over the years. Who's got the confidence to stand up mm. when, for example, a well-known television presenter says to you in front of a room of 20 people, how many Premier League footballers have you slept with? But it can sometimes be intimidating to speak out if you're a woman in a man's world. I mean, no one wants to be the whistleblower. For the past six months, I've been speaking to some of the most powerful women in the game. This old boy put his glasses on and he looked at me, oh yes, you're that woman. Hearing their experiences and trying to tell the real story about sexism in football. You ain't got a dick, but you have got great big balls. <laughs> In January of last year, a number of off-air comments made by Sky Sports presenters Andy Gray and Richard Keyes brought the subject of sexism to the fore. Shut up. <laughs> 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 and I, but I genuinely, I didn't think, oh, Sky's a bad place or those people are bad people. I just thought, that's what happens and they've got caught out. Honestly, my first reaction was there but for the grace of God. And I defy any broadcaster to go, we have never said anything, not sexist or racist, or whatever, but just something that could come back and catch us out. Shall we really chuck this in here for me, look? Shall I? I think the Charlotte Jackson piece in particularly had an undertone of real sinister. Charlotte, I don't know her, but. I know that she is a very capable and able woman. It was the fact that she felt unable to respond. I apologised on the Sunday. He was bleating on about the fact that, you know, he tried to phone me to apologise to me. Like, I'd be sitting around, you know, <laughs> waiting for his call, because I haven't got enough to do. Um, and the fact that I didn't take his call somehow my fault. I couldn't believe that there was such a hoo about it, because that's... That's banter. That's what happens. When you heard or you saw the story break about Richard Keyes and Andy Gray and the various incidents that came out from Sky, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I just, uh, just, it was, um, you know, I just seen it. Um, <laughs> good question, Gabby. <laughs> good, it's a good question. Um, you know, I think that the thing for people like me is, you know, in this in this climate we live in, it's, you know, you. See, even now you panic at what you're going to say, not because he's a woman or he's a man, because you're just scared of say, saying the wrong thing, and I think that's how football is. I think it was lucky for us that they were caught on camera, because I think things change now, and I think people are a lot more aware of what they're saying, and society are a lot more aware of how, maybe how it is in our industry. Neither Richard Keyes or Andy Gray chose to take part in the making of this programme, but Richard Keyes was not the first person to make unwelcome remarks about Karen Brady. She's been at boardroom level since 1993, when she became the first female managing director of a football club at the age of just 23. So turning up to my first press conference with sort of shoulder pads and earrings, sort of big hair, and giving this sort of really professional presentation to the masses of press that were interested in this young woman. And when I finished, I said to the press, um, any questions? And of course, his little hand went up. And I said, yes, sir. 
he said, what are your vital statistics? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, here we go. That's the only thing they're interested in. She's hard, she's tough. She's the managing director of Birmingham City. Please welcome Karen Brady. <laughs> Everybody's got an anecdote about being mistaken for a wag or a tea lady or having some kind of crude innuendo. That's fine. Most people can laugh those off. Anna Kessel hears a lot about the issues women face, not only because she writes about football for The Guardian and The Observer, but also because she's a co-founder of the Women in Football group. We've had stories of much, much more serious abuses, physical abuse at work, sexual harassment, discrimination, um, really upsetting stuff. This is the first time I've actually sort of openly spoken about it. Um, the gentleman in question sort of looked at me and said, you can't come in, no women allowed here. I thought he was joking, particularly because it was so timely after the, the, the mm. keys and grey. We're talking two or three days later, I think. And uh, I really thought he was joking, so I kind of laughed and kind of gave him a little bit of a, you know, an elbow. Oh, thanks very much. And he said, no, I'm serious. No women allowed. Get out. The kind of worked all right, but, but it gave me the confidence. Vicky Kloss is one of two women in Manchester City's six-person executive team. Last year, she was the subject of physical abuse. You've let my male colleague in. I'm his boss. <laughs> um, you've let him and not me. Um, and he said, well, he can go too. And he, we were physically thrown out. I was physically pushed up against a wall and thrown out. So you didn't uh, get down? Uh, we were, we, as the players and the manager came off and trooped into the dressing room, myself and my, my head of media relations, both of us were on the other side of the door, not in the tunnel, not being where we needed to be to do, uh, to do our job. If thousands of fans at a game shout racist abuse, there is a law to protect that person that's being abused. Um, a TV female reporter who thousands of fans were shouting slatter at her. There's no legal recourse for that. I think, oh God, there's, there's a book in there somewhere, maybe a film. I, I think if you heard most of the stories that couldn't be told, I think it would shock a lot of people. We have a flying lady today, Sean Massey. Derby captain Robbie Savage has had a go at her twice now for missing what he considers have been offside decisions. And I thought, wow, you know, she must be brave because running the line in front of a hostile crowd you know, as a woman must be a, you know, an intimidating place and fair play to her for, you know, for sticking her neck at that and, and doing it. People have felt a need to um, highlight maybe that Sean Massey has been the assistant referee at a game and then highlighted virtually within the same breath and she did very well. I used to see her in her outfit um, and I just had a go at the outfit, you know, I didn't care if it was a man or a woman, you know. That's I just, just you. <laughs> you yeah. just have a coat what people are wearing. <laughs> yeah, but it was just looking across and I didn't think, well, that's Sean Massey, I'm, I'm going to curb my, my um, behaviour to behavior towards her because she's a woman. I, I give her a volley of abuse, like what if it was a man, because that was her job. Like other referees' assistants who are in their first full year of officiating at the top level, Sean Massey isn't allowed to speak to the media about any of her experiences. It's noticeable that the majority of the women who've spoken openly to me have been in the game quite a while. Vicky Orvis became the first female staff football writer on a tabloid when she was appointed at The Sun in the early 90s. I think only twice did a manager in a press conference say something designed to humiliate me or... or what was that? One was really unrepeatable. Really? Yeah. In front of other journalists? Yeah. Sexism's an interesting one because it's almost as if it's accepted in football, whereas homophobia now isn't. If somebody's sexist in football, it's kind of like, well, that's just football. They're old school. They can't help it. It's okay. Whereas if somebody's racist in football, that's no longer accepted. And the manager said she probably likes men talking dirty to her. And we were in a really tiny, tiny sort of press room. And again, I remember well, just shutting up and getting on with it. But my point that I made was not in my column that was referred to, was, was not about sexism per se. It was about the way that, you know, you know what, what's a woman doing here? What, what does a woman know? It was sort of that sort of dinosaur mentality that I was um, referring to. That you still to. encountered, obviously, to write about it last year. Yeah, even 20 years in. And still, um, you know, I'm a woman. 
Yes, we're women, and I guess we do stand out when we're outnumbered by men. But it shouldn't really mean we're treated any differently, should it? I was pregnant with you, but nobody knew. Um, but why don't you have a fat tummy? I had my children six years ago, and I was desperate to be pregnant. I had to go through IVF to get pregnant, so when I got pregnant, the thing I was most scared about was telling my new boss I was pregnant. And his reaction was, I can only say, disappointment. You know, he, he looked kind of shocked and said, I thought you were going to tell me that. <laughs> I think that that's what makes women bosses so much... Um, so much easier to work for, because actually, the world doesn't stop when you have a baby. I think people found it quite... Um interesting that I was going to have babies and I was working in football. It seems that seems to be what the gist of a lot of these... It must have been tiring. Do you think it was? Yeah. It was actually, Lois. It was really tiring. It was tiring working and carrying two babies. I'll tell you that you went to some interesting football matches. Okay, thank you. There it seems to be flooding back to me about being in a Champions League ground in a large section of the, the Manchester United fans started singing um, Get Your Tits Out. Um, and we just thought, we'll just carry on watching the game and pretend that the glass is so thick we can't hear them. And, um, and so, even though they were the thick ones. And so we carried on watching the game and thinking that Sir Bobby, bless him, um, who was probably about 72 at the time, I wasn't hearing this because he never said anything. So we're watching the game and eventually Sir Bobby just stands up, pulls his top off. <laughs> I think it was about this time, sitting here and sharing stories with other women in football that they obviously related to, that I decided that this should not just be a programme that reflected a problem. It should try and encourage a change. And suddenly, I felt a great sense of relief. When I started presenting at Sky in 1996, Delia Smith had just become a director at Norwich City and within a year, Wendy Toms became the first female match official in the Premier League. Nowadays, women account for a quarter of the crowd at matches and a third of armchair fans. But getting to the top still isn't easy. Just ask the most powerful woman in football, Karen Espelund. And don't hesitate to ask. I mean, you are always here with a lot of people. Understand, it's a lifetime opportunity for these young, young players. Mm. These young Last year, Karen became the first woman to make it onto UEFA's executive committee. But when she first started playing the game, it wasn't even legal. The Norwegian FA, they officially uh, accepted women's football back in 76, and I'm born in 61, so the first 15 years of my life, football was not allowed for girls to play. At UEFA, Karen is responsible for both the men's and women's game. I work very hard the first years because you have to prove your competence, or at least I put the pressure on myself, and, but you had to also. I must admit that I still play football, so oh, really? I, yes, I'm a league champion in the Veterans League back in my hometown last season. Here in Cardiff, she's checking on progress ahead of Wales hosting next year's women's under-19s European Championships. I've been the one woman alone in the Exco of Norway. Uh, I've been there uh, together with uh, three others, and I've seen the difference. For example, when I came here to West Ham, there were no senior women. Um, and the first thing I did was bring, bring three senior people into the business, and they happened to all be women. And that created, I think, a much more balanced and diverse environment, different people, different perspectives, different ideas, What do women bring to a, to a board, do you think? They bring a different perspective. The truth is that men and women are different, and we should celebrate those differences. Nice, nice to see you. you. you Say, I will. Hello, Karen. This is Karen. For our own association, we've taken on many more women recently, and as far as I'm concerned, they are absolutely some of the best people that we have employed at the Football Association of Wales. You play football? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes, that's good. How important was that to you, then, to important. drive women to those positions? Very important to me. You know, I take the view uh, as a, if you're the first woman anything, whatever that is, it's your responsibility, you know, a door's been held open for you and I saw it that it was my responsibility to hold that door open for all the other women. Do you want to do Daddy's job one day, darling? Yeah. Do you think you'll do a better job than Daddy? Yeah. Sexism to me in football, it's like it's the final discriminatory act that is not only exists but is deemed acceptable to mm, exist. Tolerated. Yeah.